closer. Praise the Lord. If you are weak, I said, Praise the Lord. We well, thank the Lord for all He is doing in your life, in this place, in our state, all over the country, Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we well, thank you today. We well, bless your name because you are the ever-present one. You are with us. You are with all the locations and congregations of leaders, workers, professionals, joining us today in various ways. We're asking, Lord, you open our eyes to behold wondrous things, wonderful things in your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lead us. Guide us. Teach us yourself. Instruct us in the way we are to do the work you have given us to do. And we pray this work, your work, will prosper in our hands. Amen. Confirm it, Lord. Empower us, Lord. Amen. Help us to yield fully into your hand. Amen. And we pray there will be nothing between us and you. Amen. Confirm. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We appreciate every one of you taking the time out so early in the morning to be together so we can look at the word of God and see how the work, the work of God will prosper in our hands. And for those who are online and you are committed to the crusade as well as to the minister's professional conference, we salute your perseverance and your getting up so quick and so early, even though we might have time differences. The Lord reward your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen. Yesterday we began to look at Acts of the Apostles, actually the Acts of Christ. Because as he went up by the side, right side of the Father, he's making intercession for us. And everything that happens in the world, in the progress of the church, happens through him, by him, and for his glory. So, it's actually the acts of Christ. Not only that, it's the acts of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, it's expedient for you, good for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth will not come. But if I go away, I will send him, not each, I will send him unto you. And then he'll remind you of all that I've taught you and he will guide you into the truth. All the truth is the act of God. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And so where Christ is, and where Christ is magnified, Christ is honored, God is also there, is magnified and is honored. And so we have the acts of the Father, the acts of the Son, the acts of the Holy Ghost through the enabled disciples and Apostles, the acts of the apostles, extend it a little, is the acts of the church. If the church, membership of the church, the leaders in the church, the deacons in the church, the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers and the church, if they do not rise up and join hand and join heart with the apostles, the apostles could not do anything by themselves in isolation. The acts of the church by the power, the feeling of the Holy Ghost. Now, 
the church by the grace of God has remained and continued until this time because Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank God the church is still here. I say thank God the church is still here. Now, as we come today, yesterday I told you I'm using the letters of Acts, A-C-T-S. Yesterday we talked about the authority of the word in life and ministry. And today we're talking about confirmation by the Holy Spirit in ministry. Confirmation by the Holy Spirit in ministry. Now, we have different sections and segments of the church. And the church, by and large, has deviated from what we have in the Acts of the, in the, Acts of the Apostles. One, there are people that do all their ministry. Everything they do, their preaching, their praying, their planning, everything by the human spirit. And as far as the earth is from heaven, so the human spirit is much lower than the Holy Spirit too. There are people that do their work, the work of the church by human strategy. They plan and they put everything together and they scheme the Holy Ghost out. Holy Spirit is not there to plan with them, to empower them, to envision them, and to make them go to the places they ought to go in the power of the Spirit. They rely on human skill, human strategy. They've seen how companies are on. They have seen how corporations are on. And then they bring that knowledge and that strategy into the church. And they go by human strategy. Three things that will not measure up. Human spirit. Human skill. Human strategy. But the people that come and they want to serve the Lord and they rely entirely on the Holy Spirit. This work will go up, leaves and bounds in Jesus' name. So today, we're considering the part and the place of the Holy Ghost in ministry. Confirmation. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 8. But he shall receive power. You see, it doesn't say he shall be given a power. That one is already done. Given. The Lord Jesus went up so that he will give the Holy Ghost, shed the Holy Ghost upon every individual, not upon the constitution of the church, not upon the papers, the planning papers, upon the human beings and now as the sheds forth the holy ghost we now have to receive and ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you not before the holy ghost comes upon you there is uh, you know the personal power the human power and the human courage and the human boldness all before the Holy Ghost comes upon you. This power is the power you receive after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Please allow me to be clear, to be plain, because that's why we're here. There are people who have according to them, the Holy Ghost. And they only manifest in the assembly. 
They only manifest in their local church. They only manifest in their prayer meeting. They only manifest in their night vigil. Uh, uh, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And the result is that ye shall be witnesses unto me in the city, in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Look at chapter 13, reading from verse 2. It says, And they ministered, and they ministered to the Lord, and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work. Not for shaking while they're in their local assembly, talking only in another language in their local assembly. It says the power that we receive by the Holy Ghost is to separate us from that local assembly and then send us forth to the world whereon I have called them. The people who appear powerful, vocal, authoritative, and he said this by the Holy Ghost. And he even can demonstrate that over their loudspeaker by speaking the same language they had spoken many years before when they said they were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But you know, what the Holy Ghost wants to do is to get you out when you have the power, when you have the anointing, when you have the Holy Ghost and send you forth to the world whereon I have called you. Look at verse 3 there. It says in verse 3, And when they had fasted and prayed and laid, they laid hands on them and sent them away. They laid hands on them. What were they doing? Were they transferring the Holy Ghost on them? No, they already had the Holy Ghost. Were they empowering them? They already had the power, the misconception that, you know, when people lay hands on me, I will have the Holy Ghost. That's not what he's saying here. Already the Holy Ghost said, separate them unto me for the work that I have for them. And then as a confirmation, we'll send you forth and we'll release you from our congregation and go and do what the Holy Ghost has intended, you will do. Look at verse 4, and then in verse 4 it says, And they, so they, being sent forth. So they, being sent forth, not by a committee. So they, being sent forth, not by a panel. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto St. Lucia. And from thence, they sailed to Cyprus. We start here from chapter 1. Look at the last chapter of Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 28, we're reading from verse 25. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed after that Paul had spoken one word. Well, speak the Holy Ghost. Final chapter. Well, speak the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers. Today, as we consider this subject, confirmation by the Holy Spirit in ministry, three things we're looking at. Number one, the promised baptism for life and ministry. Number two, the powerful breakthrough in laboring for the master. Point number three, the perpetual benefits for liberation, for the liberation of multitudes. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the promised baptism for life and ministry. Who gave the promise? Christ, the Savior. Christ, the Sanctifier. Christ, the purifier. Christ, the refiner. After saving them 
And he said, rejoice not because your names are written, because uh, you have cast out devils, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Saved. And then in Acts chapter 17, he prayed and he said, Holy Father, sanctify them. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Saved. All sins forgiven. And they were set free. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. And they were sanctified. There was something in their heart that the Lord needed to cleanse and purify and purge and take away. Now, look at what he told them in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. What did he hear that? Look at Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Luke 24, verse 49. And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Jesus the Savior, Jesus the Sanctifier, called that experience the promise of the father and that they should wait they should tarry tarry and pray tarry in seeking the lord tarry in seeking the fulfillment of the promise of the father and it said they'll be endured with power from on high acts chapter 2 reading from verse 39 for the promise is unto you. I missed an amen over there. Amen. The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, far away from Jerusalem here in Bayelsa State. Far away in time from the fourth century. Those who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Three things here. Number one, the promise of baptism of the Holy Ghost. Number two, the power of the baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then number three is the progress of baptized believers through the Holy Ghost. Look at number one, the promise that he has given. I remember that all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. And as you come, and you come saved. You come, there is nothing inside your heart of this world. The Lord purifies you. The Lord purges you. The Lord cleanses you. And you say, yes, Lord, I want the power that you have promised. It will be yours in Jesus' name. Look at that in Acts again, chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Look at verse 5. It says, For John truly baptized with water. What did he do when he baptized them with water? He took them and dipped them into the river, baptized, immersed, submerged, dipped into the river, and then he brought them out. Think of it like this. Take a glass, an empty glass. You have retrieved that glass from a donkey saved. You have cleansed that glass Inside and outside, there's a change, there's a transformation, sanctified. And now you put that glass that is taken away from the dunk hill, that is cleansed and made new. Now you dip it inside water. 
the water will go inside it and the water will go around it that's what it means to be baptized you are deep you are immersed into the holy ghost and then inside you're full of the holy ghost outside the refreshing and the freshness of the holy ghost is also upon you and it says for john truly baptized with water but ye shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence somebody say amen, amen. the promise of the father the promise of the Holy Ghost. Look at chapter 2 of Acts, verse 16. But this is that. This is that. Here is Peter, and it's not talking to the multitude. They were but one accord in one place. And as they sat, the building was filled with wind. And there was a great noise, and tongues like that of fire sat on each of them. It's not a corporate baptism, it's personal baptism on each of them. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. And they didn't listen to somebody speaking in tongues over the microphone and they copying that. We need to correct this. You look at a whole church. The pastor speaks in tongues over the microphone. And the whole of the church, they speak in that same thing. The same sentence. And the same phrase. And they do that every day every day until it's talk in the memory and the things they say all the same in the whole church that's not what happened here the holy ghost gave them utterance and as they gave them utterance and they began to speak and different nations in jerusalem they heard them different languages and now peter said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Look at verse 17. It says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon, tell me, I can't hear you. Say it louder. It will happen to you. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams verse 18 it says and on my servant on my servants those who serve the Lord on my servants those who submit to the Lord on my servants those who have allowed the prophecy of salvation to take root in their lives on my servants those who have allowed the proclamation of holiness without which no man shall say the Lord they have allowed that proclamation of holiness to take root in their lives and they're now willing to serve and it says on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out. There's a difference between a trickle of water and a pouring out of water. That God opens the windows of heaven, the doors of heaven, and it pours out. When it's poured out like that, you feel it in your body. You feel it in your heart. You feel it in your soul. You feel it in your spirit because the whole personality experiences the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And they shall prophesy. Look at verse 39. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you. Make it personal. The promise is unto me. I say the promise is unto me. Now, if you are promised a new car with a new engine, with a new body, 
that will run mileage for you. And then you already have somebody as used to a car until it's no more usable. And he has given you that. And when you turn on the ignition, the, the thing is making noise, and the engine is not working well, you put petrol, as you put uh, the fuel, the thing is leaking out, but you go around saying, I have a car, I have a car, I have a car. It will hinder you from abandoning that and looking at the new car or the new engine or the new body that is really going to serve you. If you already think that you have uh, the Holy Spirit because you shake when you pray, if you think you have the Holy Ghost because you speak the same old abandoned language that somebody spoke over the microphone that doesn't reach heaven, this promise, when it comes, you'll say, is for those who don't have the Holy Ghost, I already have the Holy Ghost. This morning, you will have the Holy Ghost. Power, anointing, authority, it will drive you, and then you will drive anything before you. The power of the Holy Ghost inside you will drive them in Jesus' name. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Look at uh, chapter 2, verse 33. In verse 33, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which he now see and hear. Let's come to number 2 there. Number 2 there is talking about the power of the baptized in the Holy Ghost. The power of the baptized in the Holy Ghost. Look at chapter 4 of Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. It says, And when they had prayed, baptized people, saved, sanctified, baptized, they prayed. When they had prayed, the place was shaking. When they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were baptized before. But as they came to pray again, they were filled. I'm sure you understand. You hold the phone in your hand. And the battery is fully charged. And you make a few calls. And you send a few texts. And you send some chats. If you watch, you'll see that the battery is going down. If you keep on using and using and using, and you don't recharge, it will come to level zero. You will not be able to receive. You'll not be able to send any message. They knew that. They knew that. And they were baptized in the Holy Ghost, but now they prayed. And when they, were, when they prayed, they were refilled again. God will refill you. God will recharge your battery. And that thing that is, you know, hum, 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 and it's going down because the battery is down. Today, when the power comes upon you afresh, you will go everywhere in the strength of the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. Uh, do you see there's a difference here? Acts chapter 2, the wind came. Acts chapter 2, there was a mighty earthquake. Acts chapter 2, they were speaking in tongues. Here, the place was shaking. There are people that box the Holy Ghost. This is the only way it can move. This is the only thing it can do. The Holy Ghost is like the Father. The Holy Ghost is like the Son. Unpredictable, unlimited, illimitable. That he can do this now, and then he can do that, that one. So it's not a stereotype when the Holy Ghost comes. This is the only way he must act. And then it says they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake 
the word of God with boldness. It tells us in Acts chapter 4 verse 33. In verse 33 it says, And with great power give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace, great power, great grace, great authority, great grace, great anointing, great grace was upon them all. It will happen again. And look at Acts chapter 10, reading from verse uh, 38. Acts chapter 10, reading from verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. I have a question for you. Think about this question. How many Holy Ghosts do we have? Talk. How many Jesuses do we have? One. Now, the Holy Ghost that comes upon the believer is the same Holy Ghost that came upon Jesus. Think about that. The Holy Ghost that came upon Jesus is the same Holy Ghost that comes upon the believer. Think about it yourself. If you have the same Holy Ghost, there's only one Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is with power. That Holy Ghost is with enlightenment. That Holy Ghost is with knowledge. And that Holy Ghost is with wisdom. If you have the same Holy Ghost on Christ, upon you today, the works he did, you will do. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth for the Holy Ghost and power, not for the Holy Ghost and weakness, anointed him not for the Holy Ghost and discouragement, and anointed him not for the Holy Ghost and suicide spirit. Somebody says, I have the Holy Ghost. And since I had the Holy Ghost, I have this tendency, something driving me to go and commit suicide. Ah, that's not the Holy Ghost. It's not the Holy Ghost and depression. You know, Pastor, I have a problem. Before I became baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was up and running. I was positive, I was active, but now, since I had the Holy Ghost, there's this depression. The Holy Ghost brought depression on them. Never. The same Holy Ghost. That's why it's good to check out what kind of power do you have? What kind of spirit do you have? What kind of baptism do you have? It says, how God anointed. Jesus of Nazareth was the Holy Ghost and with power. Power is coming. Yes. Power has come. Yes. That's the power that will drive every other negative power. Drive them away at a moment of time in Jesus' name. Yes. They went about doing good. The Holy Ghost did not paralyze him. The Holy Ghost did not tie him down. When he got the Holy Ghost and power, he was released. It has been 30 years at home of the carpentry work. But now the Holy Ghost came and power came and that released him. When you have the Holy Ghost, there will be release. Your feet will be ready to stand. Your feet will be able to move and your feet will run to the place of ministry. The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit in the heart brings holy, heavenly strength to the members of your body who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. By the way, you see the Trinity there? Look at that. Look at the Trinity. It says, and God, God the Father, anointed Jesus, that's God the Son of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost, 
that the third personality in the Trinity. And then he ends up by saying, For God the Father was with him. Look at number three there. Number three, we're looking at the progress of baptized believers through the Holy Ghost. The progress. You'll make progress. I will make progress. Understand, if you remain only with human skill, human spirit, human strategy, all you know is what human beings have taught you. And you're doing well. But for you to make progress, you need this baptism immersion in the Holy Ghost. The progress of baptized believers through the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, our day has come. Amen. My day has come. Amen. They were all with one accord in one place. That's the sanctification the Lord prayed for. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. Why sanctify them that they all may be one in us, thou in me, I in them, that they may be made perfect in one. They have been saved, their names in the book of life in heaven. They have been sanctified. They were with one accord in one place. No argument again. Who is the greatest among us? No argument again, who is the leader among us, sanctified. Then in verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came the sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and filled all the house where they were sitting. And then in verse 3, it says, And there appeared unto them, clubbing tongues like us of fire, and it sat upon each of them, each of them, each of them, over there, each of them, over there, each of them, over there, each of them. The Holy Ghost does not discriminate. As God the Father is impartial, no respecter of persons. As God the Son is impartial, no respecter of persons. The same, the Holy Ghost is impartial, no respecter of persons. It's coming to you there. I said it's coming to you there. And then in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, And they were all, and they were all, and they were all, the men and the women. And it's the same Holy Ghost. The apostles and the rest of the 120, the same Holy Ghost. They were all filled. Now, somebody says, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you know, I'm not a pastor. But you know, I'm not a preacher. But you know, I'm not an evangelist. The same Holy Spirit coming upon everyone will make the apostle apostolic, will make the prophet prophetic, will make the evangelist evangelistic, will make the pastor a shepherd, will make the teacher a real teacher of the word, will make you to do what you are called to do effectively, more effectively than if you had not got the Holy Ghost. And so, whatever ministry the Lord has given you, the Holy Ghost comes upon you afresh today. Yeah. You feel you are fresh today. Yeah. And then, what you are appointed to do, you will do it successfully, progressively, in Jesus' name. Yeah. And he began to speak with other tongues tongues languages they did not learn tongues languages they didn't even know because jesus did not talk about having uh, the speaking in tongues all he spoke about is the power because that's the essential thing but now they began to speak with other tongues 
as the spirit not as the pastor as the spirit not as the one holding the mic as the spirit gave them utterance he'll give you utterance Amen. i said he'll give you utterance Amen. and then what followed look at verse 41 in verse 41 then did the gladly received his word were baptized in water and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Have you noticed the message that Peter gave on that first day? He pointed at them. You know, some people say, I don't like pointing. You know, the preacher is always pointing like this. And then when he points, it's like he's looking at me and I nod my head. He pointed at them. He said, you are the ones that killed the prince of life. And God has raised him up. He accused them. Then he said, I know through ignorance you did that, but now they were pricked in their hearts. Holy Ghost message will cut the heart, prick the heart, will punch the heart, and will convict the heart. That's what Jesus said when he, the spirit of truth has come. He will convict the world of sin. They were convicted. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And you shall receive the remission of sins for the promises unto you and your children. And to all that are far off as many as the Lord shall call. And the word of God says, and with many other words, he gave them exhortation. And then they that gladly received that word of repentance, the word of salvation, conversion. It says... They gladly received the word. They were baptized in water, and then the same day they were added unto them about 30,000 souls. That's what Peter had never seen in his life of ministry. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, what you have never seen, you will see in Jesus' Amen. name. Now, now, now. When uh, Peter met the Lord, Jesus said, have you any meat? He said, have you any fish? He said, no. Cast your net there and launch out into the deep. And then he caught a multitude of fish. And then another time, Christ was walking on the water. And when they saw him, they were all afraid. And then Peter said, if that be thou, Lord, bid me to come to you walking on the water. And he came out of the boat and he walked on water. I've, uh, I've given you those two instances for you to understand. Getting fish, multitude, walking on the water, or having 3,000 souls converted and their names written in heaven. Which one will you choose? You want to walk on the water? Which one will you choose? You want to catch fish from the river? I said, which one will you choose? 3,000 getting converted. You know, when we talk of miracles, we classify those miracles to get the fish. That's a great miracle. To walk on the water, that's a great miracle. Now to have 3,000 souls in one message. If you have 1,000, he has 3,000, he has 1,500. In one week, if we can have that and we spread everywhere, that will be the greatest miracle of the year, of the decade for us. It will happen in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 4. We're looking at verse 4. In chapter 4, verse 4, how be each many of them which heard the word believed. That's what we're looking for. That's the progress the Holy Ghost will bring. Somebody calls you on the phone and then you answer the phone and before you finish, you went into preaching and within a few minutes, the fellow is convicted and the fellow said, what shall I do to be saved? And you leave him on phone and get saved. That's a great miracle. Somebody is having a challenge with evil spirit. He'll be going to church, coming to church, going to church, coming to church, and the word has never reached him. And he's almost like hardened by the gospel. Then you come across him. Hello, brother. How are you? And 
then as you are talking, uh, you switch off to the gospel. You begin to preach the gospel and God gives you a word that penetrates him uh, because you speak of something you know, exactly happening you know, in his life. He breaks down. He confesses his sin. <clears throat> and then uh, he repents and becomes born again. That's a miracle. When uh, our lives our conversation, our interaction will be bringing people to Christ that the miracle we are waiting for. Amen. It will happen. Amen. That's what we call revival. That's what we call renewal. It goes beyond just going to church, going to church, and just preaching and just preaching. Revival will come in our midst in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 17. I'm looking at the latter part of verse 6. Acts chapter 17. We're looking at the latter part of verse 6. These that have turned the world upside down, they have come hither also. They were making progress, conversions, conversions, conversions. And now the people, even the Gentiles, the heathen, they built testimony with them. They have turned the world upside down. Can we do it? I said, can we do it? Yes. It's our time. Those apostles have gone. We are the people here now. And the power of the Spirit of God comes upon us as it came upon the people in the New Testament. We too will turn our world the right side up in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, the powerful breakthrough, laboring for the master. Powerful breakthrough. We'll have a breakthrough. You will have a breakthrough. Look at chapter 11 of Acts, verse 24. Acts, chapter 11, reading from verse 24. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and faith. Have you noticed that the Holy Ghost doesn't enter alone? Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and peace. Holy Ghost and love. It's shared abroad. It's love in our hearts by the Holy Ghost given unto us. Holy Ghost and faith. He was a good man. And full of the Holy Ghost and faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Three things we're looking at. Number one, astonishing miracles confirming they preaching. Number two, angels ministry connected with the preachers. And number three, authoritative mastery with compelling persuasion. Look at number one there. Number one, number one, Astonishing miracles confirming their preaching. In Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. It says, Peter says, Jesus of Nazareth, you remember him, was selling the people, was approved of God. Among them, by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you all as so yourselves also know the holy ghost had come upon the son of god and that holy ghost manifested himself in mighty signs and wonders now that same holy ghost came upon the apostles and disciples look at verse 43 in verse 43 and fear came upon 
every soul, every soul in the community. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That's what happens when the Holy Ghost comes and your time has now come. Yeah. Many signs and many wonders. Yeah. I said many signs and many wonders. Yeah. And then in verse 47, it says, we are praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added, addition is coming in your ministry. Yeah. Addition is coming in your life. Addition is coming in your family. When the Holy Ghost comes, positive, practical progress will come to every life and ministry. It says, and the Lord added to the church daily, daily. Somebody shout, daily. daily. Let's face the fact. Many of us, Maybe all of us. We go through services, Sunday, weekday service, prayer meeting, study, devotion, everything. And we see soul, one soul perhaps, during Easter period. Ten souls during Easter period. After that time, then we have a special mission week in our church. And our special mission week, we invited, we invite an outside preacher because there's nobody within there full of the Holy Ghost who can get souls into the kingdom. And maybe some five, seven people come and then we follow them up two, three times in the year. But, you know, for the early church, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, the progress they saw daily, God added to the church such as shall be seen. Let's come to number two. Number two here, angels' ministry connected with the preachers. You know, the leaders in the early church, they didn't have contact with people of the powers that were. The Sanhedrin didn't have any friends there. And the Sadducees, Pharisees, they didn't have any contact there. Anybody that could help them, everyone was against them. But we today, all we have, when there's a challenge, there's a problem, we have contact or so and so. We have contact with such and such, and then the church is writing to them, when this problem get us out of this, we have even forgotten to pray, to call upon God, to call upon the name of the Lord, and to have the Holy Ghost get us out of that problem. In the early church, they didn't have that long leg, that long contact. All they had was the Holy Ghost, and then angels ministered unto them. The power, the perception, the fullness of the Holy Ghost power in our lives in Jesus' name. Somebody said, I want the church to be like the church of the early years. Then shift your focus away from men and shift your focus to God and let the power of the Holy Ghost work mightily through you and in every church and we'll go back to the original power, potency, progress of the early church. We're told in Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 19, Acts chapter 5 verse 19, but the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth. The angel of the Lord. When the people were in prison because of what they were preaching, then there was nobody, no human being to help them. But God knew they needed to come out and preach the word and said, look at verse 20, and the angel said, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life all the words 
take everything the world and go and speak to them. That angelic ministry will be visible from now on in Jesus' name. In verse 21, verse 21 says, And when they had that, they entered into the temple early in the morning. Ah, were not the only one having meeting early in the morning. The else were even earlier than ours. And so there's no complaint. Why? The angel said, go now, now, and stand and speak in the name of Jesus all the words of this life. And early in the morning, they went in and taught the people. I pray that all these commitments and all these confirmations in the early church will come back to the church yeah. human skill will not drive the holy spirit away yeah. human spirit will not drive the holy spirit away yeah. human strategy will not drive the holy spirit away the holy spirit will come and it will take over and he will do the work he used to do. He wants to do it if we allow him. Let's come to number three there. Number three, authoritative mastery with compelling persuasion. Authoritative mastery with compelling persuasion. When those people preach anywhere, it may be in Jerusalem, where the hardened religious people were. It may be in Judea, where syncretic religion reigned. It may be in Samaria, where they have amalgamated with the religions of the day. It may be in the uttermost part of the earth, where they were total, complete heathen, Gentiles in their idolatry. Anywhere they went, the wisdom of the Spirit and the power of the Spirit spoke through them and there was compelling persuasion. I pray the Lord will give us the word. Who you say is because they were highly educated. No, sir. Peter, James, John were fishermen like many of us here and then Matthew was just a tax collector like some of us here and many of those people they didn't have the knowledge of the things of the world many of them did not even go through what we call secondary school today but when the Holy Ghost came when the power of the Holy Ghost came when the arrow of deliverance from the Holy Ghost came, when that guest from heaven, the Holy Ghost, came upon them, it changed their personality. It will change your personality. It will change your life. And the power, the presence, and the glory of the Holy Ghost will work mightily in your life in jesus name Amen. look at acts chapter 17 reading from verse 1 acts 17 verse 1 now when they had passed through amphipolis and apollonia they came to thessalonica where was the synagogue of the jews look at verse 2 and paul as his manner was. Paul, as his manner was. Paul, as his manner was. Have you noticed when you start to do something, you might look clumsy. You might look uncoordinated. You're doing it for the first time. Generally, you don't do something perfectly well when you are doing it for the first time in your life. Maybe you have not been a regular speaker. The first time you speak, you wanted to speak for 30 minutes and all the material you had finished in 10 minutes. Do it again. And do it again. Do it again as his manner was. 
If you don't do what you ought to do regularly, persistently, you will not perfect the method of doing it. But Paul the Apostle, because he did it, as his manner was, as his manner was, as his manner was, he perfected what the Lord called him to do. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And thirty Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Then in verse 3, we're told, opening and alleging, opening their eyes of understanding, opening and alleging. Reading those verses, interpreting them, applying them, and showing them what they ought to understand in that verse of scripture and proving to them and alleging that this person it was introducing to them that he was the Christ indeed that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ is the Christ and he did that so wonderfully well. When he did it the next time, he improved on it. When you do it the next time, uh, you improve on it. That's how to perfect whatever the Lord has called you to do. When you came at chapter 26, reading from verse 18. Acts chapter 26, reading from verse 18. 18 to open their eyes that was his calling and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in christ it was christ talking to him so the me there is christ verse 19 in verse 19 it said thereupon o king agrippa i was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision persecution could have made him disobey the heavenly vision and the pressure could have made him disobey the heavenly vision and the push and the pull of the world for have made him disobedient to the heavenly vision. But he said, through it all, whatever had happened, good or bad, up or down, forward or backward, from people or demons, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I pray that testimony will come to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at number three now. Point number three, the perpetual benefits of for liberation of multitudes. What the Lord has given us, what the Lord has given you will liberate multitudes of people. You don't know I was talking to you. I said what the Lord has given you. The word. The Holy Ghost. The power. The vision. The pursuit. And the energy. Energy of the spirit within you. That the Lord has given you. Will make you reach out to many. Will make you operate freely. Everywhere multitudes will come to the Lord in Jesus name now what were they benefiting from what are the benefits that came to them number one courage of conviction through the Holy Ghost number two the comfort and consolation by the Holy Ghost Number three, the control and constraints by or of the Holy Ghost. Look at number one. Number one, courage of conviction through the Holy Ghost. 
<laughs> you know, when you preach that Jesus is the only way, not Jesus and another man, Jesus and another woman, Jesus and idol, Jesus and tradition. When you preach that Christ is the only way, the only name given among men by which we can be saved. And then somebody else comes and he speaks with flowery language. And he said, it's not only Jesus and introduces another personality. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, they are persuasive language. They have mastered the use of the language of men and women, the language of many countries. That may shift you. That may sway you. But when you have the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost assures you, no other Savior, no other Redeemer, no other healer, Jesus Christ, our Savior, a sanctifier, our healer, and the coming king, you become courageous in conviction. And it is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, we're reading from verse 8. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Then he went on to say, If we, the challenge, asked by what power, by what name, be it known to you that that cornerstone that you have rejected is become the hedge of the corner. And then in verse 12, it says, Neither. <clears throat> Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only that name. The name of Jesus is the Savior. You cannot introduce Jesus and religion, Jesus and tradition, just the name of Jesus. And that name of Jesus will do everything there is to do in every life. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant men. I told you, they didn't have graduate certificates. They didn't have doctorate certificates. They were unlearned and ignorant men. Yet, they were bold. The courage of conviction. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They'll take knowledge of you. They said the boldness and the power, the authority and the anointing. They'll take knowledge of you. You've been to Jesus, he saved you. You've been to Jesus, he sanctified you, purged you, purified you. You've been to Jesus, he baptized you in the Holy Ghost and power. Your courage will not fail you when it's demanded in Jesus' name. Amen. I think of a boy, I'm talking about you actually, coming out of the house. And he says, today, I'm going back to school. And when that bully, when he shouts on me, and when he does this or that, I'll give it to him today. I'll, never, I'll not cringe. But there is nothing different from this boy yesterday and today as he was yesterday so he is today he's only bragging and assuring himself i see that bully today i show him and then he carries his bag at his back and then he comes to school and then he's at the gate and look at the first person he sees at the gate the bully 
And that police said, hey, why are you just coming now? And he begins to tremble. And the man said, do what you promised yourself. Do you know I can? I didn't know he's this strong. And then he begins to crumble because there is nothing in the heart. Maybe you're telling yourself, when I come out of this place and those people that used to challenge me this way and that way, when I see them, I will show them. And then, uh, if you don't have the power, the conviction of the Holy Ghost, those religious bullies, they'll confront you. And then what are you going to do? Your knees will be shaking together as other days. But that will not happen again. Amen. You have the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. And then those religious bullies, denominational bullies, they come at you and they said, hey, what are you doing there? You begin to preach to them until they collapse, until they brought under conviction and they are converted in Jesus' name. Amen boldness that's what we have look at number two here number two is talking of the comfort and the consolation of the holy ghost the comfort and the consolation of the holy ghost many believers they say they are baptized they are immersed they are filled they are saturated with the holy ghost they come to a little problem local problem a little storm in their cup of tea. And then they cry and cry and cry. There is no comfort. And then other people come to them and they say, Brother, take heart. Brother, take heart. And they say, you know, look at what has happened to me. And multiply what has happened to you by 100. It's happened to other people. When we have the Holy Ghost, it will be our consolation. It will be our comfort. We don't need to wait and say, Brother so and so has not called me on phone since I got into this problem. Sister so and so has not called me when I got into this problem. The Holy Ghost will come before them. And the Holy Ghost that knows where you each and where you ache will bring the comfort in your life in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles were looking at uh, chapter 9, uh, verse 31. Then, uh, at the churches rest throughout all Judea and, and Galilee and Samaria and they were edified walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost in the comfort of the Holy Ghost in the comfort of the Holy Ghost and they were multiplied comfort will come to you Amen. all my friends have forsaken me nobody is asking of me and they know the challenge I'm going through. They are giving place to the Holy Ghost to come and take over. Why didn't I see you? Because the Holy Ghost made me wait behind so he can come, so I don't take the place of the Holy Ghost. Every comforter you lose in your life, every companion, every consolation you lose in your life, they are giving way to the Holy Ghost to come and comfort you. He has come. The comforter. He has come. The one that gives her consolation. He has come. And you'll be comforted in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three. We're looking at the control and the constraints of the Holy Ghost now. There are people that just think, whatever comes to my mind, I just go and do it. Whatever it costs to me, I just go and do it. Again, they substitute the Holy Spirit with the human spirit. Their human skill, their human strategy, that's all they depend upon. But when the Holy Spirit takes care, takes control, takes over your life. He doesn't allow you to only go by the human skill, by the human strategy, by the human spirit. He controls, he directs, 
he constrains. Look at what he did in Acts chapter 11, verse 12. Acts 11, reading from verse 12. And the Spirit bid me go. That's enough. The Spirit bid me go. The Lord revealed to me. I said, no, Lord, I've never taken anything that is common, unclean. But the Spirit bid me go. All the other apostles challenged me. How could you? You are first rate apostle. How could you go there to the Gentiles? The answer, the Holy Spirit bid me go. You see, in our lives, when we're filled for the Holy Ghost, it's not just talking in tongues. A lot of areas where the Holy Spirit will control, go there, go there, do that, do that. The Spirit bid me go. Nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me. And we entered into the man's house. Let's look at chapter 16. I'm reading at verse 6. Acts chapter 16. Reading verse 6. Now, when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Forbidding, constrained. He controlled them. The Spirit bid me go. He constrained them. Don't go there at present. You'll go at a later hour. You know, there are people that will put pressure on you. And you say, come, come, come now. Obey Jesus. Jesus had said, go ye into all the world, every time, in every condition, and preach the gospel to them. Yes, is it time? Are they right? Are they ready? The Spirit constrained them. Now, as we bring everything to a conclusion today, we're looking at the benefits we derive from the Holy Ghost. Number one, peace. Peace. Because the word of God says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Number two, purity. That by pureness, it gives us the purity of heart when he comes in. Do you have that peace that passes understanding? Do you have that peace that's as deep as a river? Do you have the purity of heart that the Holy Ghost himself brings in your heart? Number three, power. Power. The power to do. The power to perform. The power to preach. The power to deliver. The power to set free. You remember Acts 1, 8? Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Number four is preaching. Ability to preach anywhere and everywhere. And that power to preach, persuasiveness in preaching, the Lord will grant unto you. Yeah. Number five is pleading. The pleading of the Holy Spirit that he pleads with the people. And it says, this day, the day of breakthrough, don't stay behind, come. It gives us the ability to plead. Number six, patience. And the patience of the Holy Ghost will have its perfect work in you. Number seven, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. In the power in the stress, in the open-mindedness, in the breakthrough, breaking through the heavens by the Holy Ghost. 
Number eight is perseverance. Perseverance, able to endure all things for the elect's sake. The power to endure like that is given by the Holy Ghost. Preservation, that good thing that you have, you keep by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Number ten is progress, that the church at rest throughout the land, Judea and Samaria. Not only that, they were edified, progress, and then prophecy, the spirit of prophecy. We have a most sure word of prophecy as given by the Holy Ghost, and then perfect perception. It was on the last day his last breath on earth. He had been filled with the Holy Ghost. He had been moving in the Holy Ghost. And now the last day has come. And he looked up and he said, I behold, by the Holy Ghost. And he saw the heavens opened and Jesus standing on the right hand of majesty on high. And he said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit from the time he was saved sanctified, filled, baptized with the Holy Ghost and moving in the strength of the Holy Ghost. On the final day on earth, the Holy Ghost was still with them. I'll send you the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, and it will abide with you forever. And today, as we come into the ocean, as we come into the stream, as we come into the river of the Holy Ghost, he will fill you. Amen. He will immerse you. Amen. He will submerge you. He will baptize you and empower you and envelope you in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody ready there? I said anybody ready there? Stand up and talk to the Lord. We've heard so much. Let's tell the Lord what the Lord can do and what the Lord will do and say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Just was sitting down. Maybe you came as a spectator. You came as an observer to observe what is going on. Those who come, those who have come as participants, and you want the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon you afresh. Where are you? Rise up and open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Yes, 